So we are in the book of Romans, which is one of the most well-known books. Guys, we don't need talking while I'm talking. Gentlemen, we don't need talking while I'm talking. It's one of the most well-known books in the New Testament. Okay, And what type of... Well, actually, let me ask this. So if you needed to communicate information to someone, okay, or you wanted to talk about something and explain something, in this case... Uh, the gospel is going to be explained. That's what Romans is kind of about. But Paul is, it writes this book called Romans to the people in Rome, the church in Rome, who've already been told the gospel, but Paul wants to explain it more, explain what it's about in a lot more detail. Okay, But what if you had to communicate information to someone that you weren't with? You weren't physically, you know, like we're here together in this room or you go to the same church or you know each other in the same town and you talk. How would you get information to someone that you're not uh, with? Yeah, Katie? Calling them? Okay. Yeah, so you could call them. Yes, that helps now. Okay, yeah, you could yell if you're close enough. Okay, let's go to Seth first. Send a letter. You could send a letter. Yes, that's actually what Romans is and that's what a lot of the New Testament is. So we'll come back to that. Uh, Tilly, you, you were going to say send a letter. You were correct as well. Yeah, a lot of the New Testament books are not actually books like you'd go and read from the library or have in your house. They were, they were letters that were sent to churches. Okay, so we'll come back and talk about that. Uh, Savannah, did you have one you want to suggest? How would you I was going to do send a letter. Send a letter. Very good. Okay, any other ones? Yeah, Seth? Drive to them. You could drive to them, travel there. Think carefully. Yes? Take a boat, yes. That's what Paul often did as well. You travel and sometimes by boat. Uh, yeah. No. Airplane. Airplane, yeah. So, yeah, we have to remember. Okay. All right. Enough suggestions for right now. Okay. Gentlemen. Yes, there are a lot of ways, and especially more now. We have phones. We have the internet. We have, you know, different things like that. Yeah, Yeah, let's put your hand up. Okay. So we have a lot of ways now, but back then, this was 2,000 years ago, okay? So there were, it took a long time for letters to get places and information and stuff like that. It's not as fast like it is today. Um, so like if you wanted to call someone today, guys, guys, enough with the sound effects and talking. This is the last time I'm going to talk about that. So if you wanted to talk to someone today on the other side of the world, it's, it's possible and it's a lot easier, but... Um, back then, it took a long time for news or information to get somewhere. So Paul, he's writing to the Church of Rome, and he wants to teach them about the gospel and explain it uh, a little bit more fully and explain to them what the gospel is all about. Um, so he, he writes it down and sends it to them. Now, another question that we have to think about, because a lot of the books in the New Testament that we just sang the song about, a lot of them are letters, Okay, so they're letters that were written to churches. But here's a question we have to deal with when we're reading lots of books of the Bible, but especially these books in the New Testament. If Paul sent a letter to a church 2,000 years ago, why are we still reading it today? Yeah, Katie, what do you think? Because it's very, very, very important. Okay, because it's important? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dakota, do you have your hand up? No? Okay. Tilly? Yeah, because what Paul wrote back then, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit, so God was using him to write down Scripture, which is God's Word, and that, like you guys said, putting it together, that it was important, and that it was stuff that we can still learn from today. So it, it, while he wrote it to one church, it was supposed to be truth for all the churches to learn and uh, know from. Is this going to be a wise decision of mine? Uh, Please silence all the voices. Uh, Justin, did you have some? Uh, did you have something you wanted to add? Yes, to spread the gospel. Yeah, and that's how. See, we're still reading this today, and that's why there's still uh, Christians today, is because you know we heard this from the gospel from someone else, or you know we they got it from God's word, which is still around. Paul's not alive anymore. He's in heaven now. Um, Jesus has has gone back to heaven, so we have God's word to still teach us these things. So let's talk about what Romans is about, a little review. Okay, so I said it's about the gospel, but we've gone over this quite a bit. What does the gospel mean? Okay, Christian? Uh, it, it is true that it is God's word. Dakota? It means the good news, yes. Yeah, it's true. What you said is accurate. It's the good news about 
Jesus and about salvation. It's the good news of, uh, sometimes it calls it the, go- uh, the gospel of God, the good news of what God has done to save us. Okay, so Romans is, is all about that. And what Romans is really about is about the, the righteousness of God. And it's about not that just God is, is righteous and his character and who God is, but it, it's about how we can be righteous before God too, even though we're sinners and we've committed uh, sin and we've disobeyed God. Um, what does the word righteousness mean? It's actually... You can kind of see it from the word itself. Right. It means what? Right. Yeah, it means this that. Is this? <laughs> yeah, it means that God is is totally right in his in who he is and uh, what he is and his character and everything that he says and everything that he does. He is righteous, meaning God's always right. God is. He never does anything that's that's wrong or sinful, and he's the standard for everything that's right and good and true. So God is right and righteous, and we're supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be like that. Uh, That's what God created man to be, is to have his image and to show God's righteousness, and we're supposed to be righteous before God. Um, But there's a problem, right? Um, What's the problem with us being righteous, being right before God? Katie? Because I think that's a sin. Well, that maybe if we're trying to be God, but yeah, basically sin is the problem, right? Sin is disobedience to God. It's, it's not following God's law. It's, it's breaking God's standard. And uh, does anybody know, this is an, there are a lot of Awana verses in Romans, so it is an important book. Anybody know Romans 3.23? Let me put it this way. How many people have sinned? More than a thousand. Well, I mean, how many people have sinned? Huh? Everybody. 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 So Everybody. Romans 3.23 is an Awana verse. You probably, Seth, you know what? All have sinned and fall short for the glory of God. Uh, of, yes, very good. Yes, all have, uh, all have sinned. Yeah, so it talks about there, there's no exceptions to that all, that, that everybody is a sinner. Everybody has broken God's law. Everybody has rebelled against God. So, so the question is now, how can we be right before God? Um, okay, so let's talk about the kind of the main, some of the main verses of Romans, okay, and talk through how this works and what Paul explains. Uh, can somebody read Romans 1, 16, and 17? It's actually an Awana verse too, so you might you get double points if you quote it. Uh, Seth, do you want to read it? Um, Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes first of the Jews and for the Gentile. Gentile. For in the gospel is righteousness from God. God is related to righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it what is written, the righteousness will live by faith. Okay, very good. So yes. So Romans 1.16, is, it's in Awana verse, I don't know if you guys have remember it, but it talks about that Paul, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, meaning it's, a good, uh, it's the good news because he says it's the power of God, and he says it's also the power of God uh, for salvation. This is salvation from our sins and salvation from God's punishment for our sins. So this is the power of God for salvation. Now how do you... Um, how does somebody get this righteousness? What what does somebody have to do? It's actually in the verse. Or how does this righteousness? How do you get the the credit for this righteousness that comes from God? So Paul says the gospel reveals God's righteousness, but it also gives us the credit of God's righteousness. Yes, a very important word here: from faith or to believe. Okay, so there's no good works you can do. There's nothing um, that you can, we can try to keep God's law, all this stuff. But that won't save us 
God says, only faith. We believe in Christ and the message of the gospel. Um, So he says, okay, so that uh, the just shall live by faith. The righteous person is not one who, somebody who does a bunch of righteous stuff and makes themselves acceptable to God. It's the person who believes that God saves uh, sinners through believing in Jesus and nothing else. Okay, um, so all right, let's let's move on. Um, but Paul kind of now talks about well, what's the problem that the world's in? We've talked about sin. Okay, but how does God um, react toward sin? Or how does God think about sin? Yeah, Katie? Awfully. Awfully? Yeah. He does, does God like sin? Not no. at all. No, God hates sin, right? Uh, Tilly, where are you going to add? I was going to say. That God hates sin? Yeah. And so God, uh, God is just, and if God is just and does justice, how does that mean he's supposed to because of who he is? How does that mean how he's supposed to treat sin? Well, if there's like, yeah, uh, go ahead, Ken. Read. I, I don't know how to say it, but like, he's not supposed to like, I don't know, like, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words. Okay, you can think about it for a minute. Uh, Dakota, were you raising your hand? I thought I had, I knew, but no. Okay, yeah, so it's all right. So you guys can continue to think about it. It's not an easy question, but God... Um, just like a, a judge, if a judge just says, okay, this criminal comes in and they've broken a bunch of laws and they've hurt a bunch of people and done a bunch of bad stuff, is the judge supposed to say, oh, that's okay, it's not a big deal? No. 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 So, that's, uh, so God is the ultimate judge, and that's how it's, he's described in Romans, is that he's supposed to uh, punish sin. Not because anybody's making him, but because that's who God is, because he's righteous. But that means if God punishes sin, then we're in trouble. Right, so, yeah, that means all of us are going to die, right? Because there's another Awana verse, right? Romans six twenty three. Anybody know that one? The wages of sin. Go ahead, kid. Is death. The wages of sin is death. Yeah, which means that that. But yes, the good news, the free gift of God is eternal life, right? So, but sin equals death. That God uh, should punish us for our sins, right? So, and I'll read this one. Uh, so you can read along with me in Romans 1.18, Paul talks about the problem. So he said, okay, here's the good news. Romans 1, 16, 17, salvation comes through the gospel by faith, but now he has to talk about how, okay? So he talks about, he says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So he uses this word here where he talks about... Uh, God's wrath. Does anybody know what the word wrath means? Yeah. Katie? Go ahead. Like his punishment for us. His punishment, yeah. And his anger at sin. That God is not sinfully angry. God is righteously angry. God wants things to conform to his, his nature and character because he's right. Okay, so this means, and, and Romans talks about that every human being even if they're not a Christian, even if they've never heard the gospel, every human being knows God as their creator, but every human being sins against God and tries to push down that truth, okay? So, we're all guilty. We've all sinned, okay? But Romans goes on and talks about even if, you're tr- even if you try to be a good person, even if you try to keep God's law, well, God's law will not make you righteous before God. Right? And even if you started keeping God's law perfectly, you couldn't go back and undo all the sins that we've committed before. Yeah. Right? Even if I started keeping God's law perfectly from this day forward, well, I've committed sins my whole life. So, uh, and so have you guys. So I can't go back and undo that. Right? So I'm still, I'm still guilty. Um, so he talks about this, and Paul talks about that the, the whole world is stuck. We're condemned. We're in a place where, uh, where God's Anger against sin should punish us, right? Another, Romans has a ton of these verses that you guys memorize. There's uh, Romans 3, 10, and 11. It says, uh, it gives an analysis on the whole world, okay? And it says, there is none righteous. You guys know this one? Somebody said it. There's none righteous. Was that you? Yeah. 
Oh, Hannah says she knows it. There's no none righteous, not even one, not even one person is righteous before God. So we're we're all stuck. But I thought Paul was saying this was good news. Why is he telling us this? And he says that the law doesn't help us. The law just condemns us and points out our sin. Um, and so he says we're all in this position before God. God's wrath is against us. God is righteous and we are not. We've committed sin. There's none righteous. The law cannot save us. And we, you know, so, so okay, how does God... How does God give his righteousness, uh, the credit of his righteousness to us? How does God uh, forgive our sins? Okay. Um, well, let me ask you guys. So how does, how does God make that right? How does God forgive our sins and also stay true to his, uh, his justice? Yeah, Seth? Um, I forget. Okay, that's right. Okay, what's that? Did somebody say Justin? Uh, by people dying on the cross. Uh, not by people dying on the cross. One, you're you're on the you're getting warmer though. I know. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go with Owen. By Jesus. Dying on the cross. Yes, by Jesus. So God sends uh, Jesus, God's son. Okay, which we've talked about. That we, this means he shares the same nature as God, and he proved that by rising from the dead. Okay. So Jesus, so we've sinned. The wages of sin is death. death. Okay, now we've got... So we should die for our sins, right? And we should be punished by God for our sins. But Jesus never sinned. No. So why did Jesus die? Uh, Kenzie? For our sins. Yeah, so Jesus dies. Uh, he, God treats him uh, like that for, uh, for our sins. Okay, so Jesus dies on the cross... For our sins. Okay, so the, that means God's anger at sin. Who is it, instead of being directed at us? Who is that directed towards? Katie, uh, Tilly. Go. Jesus. Yeah, that God's wrath, His punishment, was directed at Jesus for our sins, not at us. Right? Jesus came uh, willingly to do that. Okay, and Jesus died and took our sins on Him. Okay, and then did Jesus stay dead? No, no. Um, he he rose from the dead, showing that God uh, that God approved what Jesus had done. Okay, that He took on our sins, and so this is a really important word here. This is uh, in Romans three twenty four. It's the word propitiation. Okay, this it says He sent God sent Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins. This means the sacrifice that satisfies God's wrath, meaning God doesn't, uh, God doesn't treat us like we deserve. He accepts us now as his, uh, as his children if we believe in Jesus. You have to have faith in Jesus. Now, this is not by being a good person. This is by believing in Christ. So let me read Romans 3, uh, 23 through 24 and 25 talks about Romans 3.23. This is a part that, uh, that you guys probably all have memorized. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay, But Romans 3.24 says being justified, that means to be uh, justified, means that God declares you righteous. Okay. Has anybody sinned today? I should see every hand. So yeah, we all have. So wait a second. God calls us righteous. So does that mean that we're totally righteous, that we never sin anymore? No. No, because God doesn't make us righteous. He will, if you're a believer, you will become uh, righteous uh, like Christ. But he declares you to be righteous, that he, God says that you're, you're righteous in his sight. You're not condemned by sin. So you're justified because of, and then Romans 3 uh, 24 says, find my spot, being justified as a gift, meaning God did this freely by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. So God made Jesus a propitiation, meaning a sacrifice that uh, took on God's wrath so that, uh, that we didn't have to experience that. Okay, so that's kind of what Romans is about. We've got to 
got it. We got <coughs> to end right at seven fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a little slow. That's five minutes behind. We're also going to do a little. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's Romans. Really good. Highly recommended. <laughs> that's what the gospel is about. It's uh, and Paul just continues on that. Okay. So let's uh, let's close in prayer and then. All right, gentlemen, ladies. All right, let's move past gentlemen for prayer. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you that you uh, provide a little way for our salvation, which is the, the good news uh, in Jesus through faith, uh, when you didn't have to provide anything like that at all. Lord, we pray that, uh, that those here tonight who do not know you will put their faith in Christ for their salvation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.